All right, I'm going to start the videos on polar coordinates and um, having things in polar form and what that uh, does for us. Okay, so this is kind of a fun unit. I hope you enjoy it. All right, so first, just want to go through some basics. So, and I'm going to go ahead and go, go over what I did in class um, and then just extend it. We, we focused on the things I, I really wanted to try to get you to, to, to see before you were on your own. All right, so in the rectangular coordinate system, when we plot a point, <clears throat> it's an, an ordered pair like that. So you know how to do that. You know, if you plotted the point negative 3, 5, it would be right, oops, not there, it'd be up a little bit higher. It'd be like right here. Okay, um, and if you plotted the point 0, 2, be careful about these. The 0 means you don't go left or right because this is your X, this is your Y. The 2 means you'd be right here, okay? So that would be point number 1. This would be point number 2, okay? So you know how to do that. But you can also plot points in a different coordinate system called the polar coordinate system. Okay? When, you need, when you're doing that, your points are going to have r followed by theta and the r might be a positive number and the angle might have a positive rotation okay so we'll do that one or you might have maybe a negative number there let's do a different rotation and i'll show you what that means and then we'll practice i'll get you to try some on your own down here we'll look at at three problems that you'll try you'll pause the video and try them Okay, so the ones I'm going to have you do here, okay, would be 2, 2, 10, negative 3, 3 pi over 2, okay, and then negative 1, negative pi over 4. So we'll get all of those plotted, okay? So back up to the just the beginning idea. So um, theta is the angle of rotation. This is always the initial side, like it normally is. And then 3 pi over 4 would actually mean that you'd rotate to where your terminal side was over here. Okay? So this would be the 3 pi over 4, that far. Okay? Then what you do is you look at the number that we give you here, and that tells you that that R actually stands for radius. You know, how far out from the center are you? And if it's positive like that, it's going to be how far out from the center are you on the terminal side of that angle. So that would be the location of point three. Okay, it would be right there. It would be on the second, um, so, so that's one unit, that would be two units, along the terminal side of that three pi over four angle. So this would be where three pi over four would be, and then you're out two units. All right, now on number four, the angle you're doing, I'm gonna do it in a different color, so the angle you're doing there is um, pi. So you're going to go all the way around to pi, okay, which would be here. Why did it change colors? Let me try that again. Okay. So you'd be all the way around to here. Okay. But see how that has a negative on it? If it were a positive 2, you'd be on the two, second circle out. Since it's a negative 2, you go backwards. If you were to extend the terminal side in the reverse direction, then you go backwards too, and it would be right there. So that would be point number four, okay? All right, so try these three. Pause the video and try these three to locate those, and then we'll see if we're right. So I'll do the, the first one in blue, Second one, I'll do a different color and so on. So just pause the video and you do it. I'm going to go ahead and do it um, here as well. All right, so 210. 210 would be all the way around 30 degrees past 180. So right there would be 210 degrees. Okay, and then the 2 is positive. So here's the terminal side of that angle. I would go out from the center two units, and right there would be... 0.5, where the, the point number five would be, problem number five would be, okay? Now, on number six, okay, on number six, I'll do that one in red. There's a negative three on it, and then but then positive three pi over two. So I'm going to go around, 
okay, until I get to positive 3 pi over 2. Here's the terminal side of that angle. That would be the terminal side for 3 pi over 2. The negative 3 just means I'd back it up 3 units. So I'd reverse, go back, and then go 3 units in the opposite direction of the terminal side. Okay? All right, let's try another one. So then on this one, let's go to green. <clears throat> On this one, I have a negative angle, which means, remember, to rotate in the negative direction. So I have to go this way, pi over 4. So that's negative pi over 4. Okay, and that would be the terminal side for it. This is negative, so that means I have to back that terminal side up. And I would be one unit away from the center. So I'd be like right there. Okay? All right, and see, that point could be written in an equivalent way. I could have written it as um, 3 pi over 4 with a positive 1, and that would have been that same point. So there are like equivalent ordered pairs that would say the same thing. Okay. Now, the most important thing for the whole rest of the packet is actually this. Put a big asterisk by it. I'm going to do it in red. Okay, a little thicker. Okay and put a big asterisk by it. This is really important. It's all stuff that doesn't have to be memorized. You can figure it out, but you have to understand the situation. What I'm doing here is trying to show you the relationship between plotting a point like this point right here, say, plotting it as a regular old XY rectangular coordinate system ordered pair versus an R theta ordered pair. So imagine that point. Okay, we want the connection between those two ordered pairs. So that one point could be described using a regular ordered pair or described using rectangular and polar coordinates. Here's the relationship that you could figure out. So this right here, if I drop the perpendicular, doesn't look so good, but pretend that goes, well, let me just fix it. Let me do that again. Okay. All right, so there's the point. I'm going to draw the the terminal side. I'm going to drop, oh, I did it again. Oh well. I'm going to drop that perpendicular. That's a little right angle right there. Okay, so you know if this point is called xy, then this is x and this is y. You know the r is the hypotenuse. You know the theta is this right here. Okay. And so looking at that and thinking about it, you can get a lot of the relationships. You know that x squared plus y squared has to equal r squared. And then you could get r by just doing the square root of both sides and getting r being the square root of x squared plus y squared. Okay. Now let's think about the angle. So if you look at the angle, you see how the tangent of that angle would have to be y over x because that's opposite over adjacent. And so if you needed the angle, you could get it by just doing the inverse tangent of y over x. All right. And then let's think about just x by itself and y by itself, how you could get those. You know how the x coordinate is re related to the cosine of the angle? So you think of x almost as being the cosine. Well, that would be true if the radius were one unit, but since the radius is r units, the cosine of the angle will be r okay, times the cosine of theta. So another way to, to realize that is to think about cosine as being adjacent over hypotenuse and then just solving that equation And then just solving that equation for x by multiplying both sides by r. Okay, And you see how that equation becomes x equaling r cosine theta. So x is basically the, uh, or um, cosine theta is basically the x coordinate, but this isn't a unit circle, so you have to multiply by r. You can see it from, from this. All right, and then sine theta would equal y over r. And when you multiply both sides by r here, it tells you 
that y would equal r sine theta. Okay, most important thing we do because it's that relationship that helps us to, to do what we have to do on the rest of these. Okay. Okay. Ah, oh, I hate it when it moves like that. All right, so let me go ahead and go to that next part. Let me just clean that up. I'm going to get it to stop auto-saving. Okay. All right, and so here on this page, <clears throat> the first three, I'm changing from rectangular to polar form. So I'm starting with things in the regular XY coordinate plane, and then I'm going to move into the R theta idea. So it really helps just to draw a picture. Pictures are the most important thing. Locate that point. It's on the terminal side of some angle. When you go over here to get the angle in R theta, you need the R and the theta, and the theta is this. Okay? So what you're going to do is think about that little triangle you can make. This is the negative 2. This is 2. Okay. And so to get the R, you can use the idea that x squared, that R equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. Or you could start from um, 2 squared plus negative 2 squared equals the R squared. That's probably the easiest thing, really. In fact, I'm going to do that because normally that's what I do. Yeah, so rather than trying to use a formula, just think about the Pythagorean theorem. 2 squared plus the negative 2 squared has to equal the r squared, because this will be where r is. And then that's 4 plus 4. So r squared is 8. So r would be the square root of 8. And it's going to be um, 2 square root of 2. And so that's going to be 2 square root of 2. That's going to go right there. For the r. Now for the angle, this particular one you might be able to guess what the angle is because see how the two sides are both two units in length? So you know that this is a 45, 45, 90 degree triangle right here. This is 45, this is 45, and if so you know that angle is really at 3 pi over 4. Okay, so you know it's in the, the second quadrant but where the 45 degrees would be. So you can do it that way or you can get your angle by thinking, well, the tangent of the angle is opposite over adjacent, which is negative 1. And then you can go to your unit circle and see right here and here are where the tangent would be equal to negative 1. That's not true. That's where cosine would be negative. Here or here would be where the tangent is equal to negative 1. And I can tell from where my point is I need this one. So that's why I'm going to put 3 pi over 4 in there. Okay, and I can use my calculator to do it, but um, they want things to be like exact answers and in, in, in that pi form. So I usually go and think about my unit circle when I can. I can't always do it, but when I can, that's what I do. Okay, so I know that would have to be 3 pi over 4. All right, let's try another one. So the second one, when I graph it, positive 1 and then negative square root of 3 would be like down here somewhere because it's like negative 1.7 about. Here's the, here's the terminal side of that angle. Drop your perpendicular. I hate it when these look so messy. I, the way I write on this makes it hard to do a really nice picture, so it's messier than I would like. Let me clean it up just a tad. Let me just start over. Okay. All right. So one negative square root of three. Okay, here's the terminal side, and here's the perpendicular I'm looking at. This is the one, this is the negative square root of three. Okay. So we know to get our r. We, we could just take the negative square root of 3 and square it, plus the 1 and square it, and that would be called the r squared. So this is going to become positive 3. This becomes 1. So r squared 
is 4, which makes R either positive or negative 2. So it's 2. Okay. Now, since we're the ones determining what the R theta would be, you know, we could make the R over on the point be negative, okay, by, by thinking about that as, as not the terminal side, but the backwards part of it. But since we're the one making the choice, we're going to let the R be a positive too. Okay. Then we're going to determine what's this angle right here. All right. So what you do for that is you think about that angle you're looking for, that theta, the opposite, and if you've got the sign on this like you're supposed to, then you'll you'll get it where it needs to be. You'll get the positive or negativeness of this like it needs to be. So this would be negative square root of 3, opposite over adjacent. Okay, so you need where is the tangent going to be equal to a negative um, where is the tangent going to be equal to a negative square root of 3? So you can look at your unit circle, all right, and determine where that's going to be. So you see how it's kind of a special right triangle? So you know it's at either the 30 or the 60 type. You know you need the um, square root of 3 to be on top. You need the tangent to be negative, and you need to be in the fourth quadrant. So you can see it's down there at 5 pi over 3. So we know that theta would be tan inverse of negative square root of 3, and we look on our unit circle, and we see that what's going to happen down there at 5 pi over 3. So that gives us the angle. Now there's other equivalent names for that point. Like I could have said negative pi over 3. I could have said negative pi over 3, okay, and then with a positive 2. Okay, or I could have gone in this direction. I'm not going to do a whole lot of this, but I just wanted to comment on it. Or I could go over here, and I could think about that being 2 pi over 3, okay, and then this being a negative 2. So there's a lot of other points that are equivalent to this one, but this would be the most straightforward, okay? All right, now let's look at 0, negative 4. This one's not... Hate it when it moves. All right, let me make sure it's done. Yeah, good. Okay, so let's look at that one. So zero negative four. When I locate it, it's just down here. Okay, so this is the initial side. So so I'm looking for this angle, which I don't need to use tangent or anything to find. So I already know my theta has to be 3 pi over 2. And then the r would be how far from the center are you on the terminal side. So you can just see it. I'm out this many units, 4 units. So my answer would be 4, um, 3 pi over 2. Okay. Now, just playing around like we did a second ago, another equivalent point for that would be to just go to here. Okay, that would be pi over 2, but then have this be negative 4. That would also get you there, wouldn't it? Okay, so there's lots of options on how you write the points. This is just the most straightforward one. Okay. All right, now in number 4, I'm, I'm going from the polar form to the rectangular form. Okay, so let's take a look at that. You ready? Okay. So I'm still going to draw a picture. There's nothing better than drawing a picture. So the angle is 3 pi over 2. 2 means I'm out this far. And I don't need to use any special formulas. I can tell what that would be in the rectangular coordinate system. It'd be 0, negative 2. So be done with it. Okay. You could do, can do, that idea that x equals r cosine theta and that y equals r sine theta, you can do that, but you don't need to. You can see that it's the point 0, negative 2 on that one. But if you did put in 2 cosine 3 pi over 2 and 2 sine 3 pi over 2, cosine is going to be 0, isn't it? sine 3 pi over 2, that's going to be equal to negative 1. So you see where your 0 and your negative 2 come from. 
Okay, but don't make it complicated if you don't have to. All right, now let's look at this one. 8, negative 8, and then pi over 3. So pi over 3 is here. Negative 8 means I'm going to extend in the backwards direction, and then I'm going to go out. Where, when I'm on that, I'm going to go out 8 units that way. So that's where I need to be. Okay, this right here is the pi over 3. And so I can see I'm going to be in the third quadrant. Okay, so you can just do the r cosine theta, r sine theta. All right, and if you do that, and you keep this as pi over 3, then you do need the r to be the negative 8. So you can just use this as your r, this is your theta, as is. Okay. Then you go and you get your cosine of pi over 3, which is a half, and your sine of pi over 3 from your unit circle, which is square root of 3 over 2, and you do negative 8 times each of those, and that's going to be a negative 4, that's going to be a negative 4 square root of 3. So this point, I'm, we're saying, in the rectangular system would be negative 4, negative 4 squared to 3. And it kind of makes sense. I'm in the third quadrant. I got the signs correct. Okay. <clears throat> All right, let's do 3 pi. So here's pi. 3 would mean I'm out 3 units on the terminal side. So you have to be careful about that. It's not like an x coordinate of 3. It's an r of 3. It means on the terminal side, which is over here at pi, you go out from the center 3 units. So you're over here. And then looking at that, can you see in the rectangular system, wouldn't that be negative 3, 0? All right. And like on the others, to get that right there, I could have done 3 cosine pi and 3 sine pi. And cosine of pi would be negative 1. That's where the negative 3 comes from. And sine of pi is 0. So that's where the 0 comes from. So I could have done that, but that one I can just see. But you do have to be careful about when you see the 3, thinking of these, these, the 2, that negative 8, the 3, those are not like x's and y's. They're how far out from the center are you on the terminal side. Okay, all right, so let's do one more. Okay, darn it, I'm trying to keep it from moving. All right, here we go. All right, so let's draw this one. 7 pi over 6. So this would be 6 pi over 6. So 7 pi over 6 is right there. I'm out two units from the center on that terminal side. So that's the point. So I know I'm going to have two negative coordinates. So this would definitely be easiest just using the formula that makes sense and then just calculating that. So the cosine of 7 pi over 6 is negative square root of 3 over 2 and the sine of 7 pi over 6 is negative 1 half. So I wind up with negative square root of 3 comma negative 1. That's this. Okay. All right, now uh, that might be a good stopping point, and then I'll come back and do the equations that can be switched from one formula.